Okay, in this exercise, we're going to be creating another world. We're going to populate this world with just two objects. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be practicing manipulating those objects uh, with some finer controls than what we were doing last time. So we're going to create a new world. Let's go up to File, New World. We're going to make a grass world. Let's zoom back out. Say Open. So there's our grass world. And I'm going to save this right away. Save World As. And this time I'm going to call it uh, Frog Exercise. You can actually call it what you want, but that's what I'm going to call it. So, save out. There we go. And uh, now all I have to do is hit save every once in a while in case anything goes wrong. So I want to add some objects to this, op to this world, so I'm going to click on the Add Object button. And I'm going to go back to my local gallery. And what I want to add is a frog. And you can find the frog in the Animals folder. And I'm going to scroll around. Well, again, these are alphabetical. There's my frog. I'm going to add an instance to this world. And there's my frog. Okay. Now I'm going to actually want to kind of take a good look at this frog. So I'm going to really I'm going to zoom in on him a little bit here. Actually, I'm going to use a method. I'm going to talk about this in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to say get a good look at this. I'll talk in more detail about it, but I want to talk a little bit about the frog um, and about what these little arrows and things mean that you see around the frog. And in fact, I'm just going to very quickly ch click the rotate button and then come back to it. Okay, You don't have to do this. I just want to show you. So notice the yellow box that encloses the object, but what I want to draw particular attention to is these uh, green, blue, and red lines. These are the axes of this object. The blue one's indicating where the front of the object is pointing. The red one is indicating to the right and the green one is indicating up. And where they meet, and I know it's a little hard to see, but where they meet is actually the center, what's considered the center of the object. And you can see if you rotate this around, this seems the center of the object is uh, the frog's head, the middle of the frog's head. And this is important to recognize, and, and I, I have it in a note for you to talk about um, in a little more, I'm going to undo a bit. The note talks about it in a little more detail. But um, the thing to recognize is the front, right, and up for the object is completely arbitrary, and perhaps with something like a frog, uh, it may seem pretty obvious what should be the front, and what should be up, and what should be to the right. But for some objects, like for instance a ball, it's not going to be obvious at all which is up and which is front and which is right. But all objects have to have a front, and up, and a right. And it's those lines that are there to help you decide it. And those directions were decided by the person who initially created that object. Similarly where the center is. Sometimes the center is smack dab in the middle of the object. But sometimes the center is somewhere else. And when we are working with the object, we need to keep that in mind, because sometimes some strange things might happen that we'll get into later that we'll talk about. Remember where the center of that object is, and that might explain some of these strange things. But anyway, the other object I want to create, I'm going to go back to Local Gallery, and I want to create something, there's a, a thing in there called Happy Tree, and you will find uh, the Happy Tree in the Nature folder. So we'll scroll out here to Nature. I'm going to look for Happy Tree. Again, these are alphabetical. And I want you to do this exactly as well because you're going to be submitting this. There's Happy Tree, Add Instance to the World. And there's my Happy Tree. And notice that I put the Happy Tree right on top of my frog. Oh dear. So I'm going to move the Happy Tree off to one side and the frog off to the other side. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to start manipulating these things. And what I want to do is I want to... Uh, make the frog a little bigger. But I'm not going to use these tools over here on the right to do that. I'm going to want to be a little more precise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the actual frog object in the object tree. And I'm going to select this methods. And then we have all kinds of things that we can do with this frog. And what I want to do is I want to resize it. And I want to resize it so that it is going to be twice as big. So I'm going to select two. Okay, so I'm going to just zoom in to make sure people are seeing what I'm doing. So I'm going to select, I'm right clicking on the frog, select methods, select resize, and select twice. So now the frog is twice as big. Okay. Right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the frog a quarter revolution to the right. And instead of using the turn button that's over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do it from the object tree. So I'm going to right click. Select Methods, 
select turn, I want to turn to the right, and I want to turn one quarter of a revolution, or 90 degrees. And now the frog turns exactly one quarter of a revolution. So it gives you more precise control over this. Let's try doing the same thing to the tree. We're going to turn the tree one quarter of a revolution, but this time to the left. So I'm going to zoom in so people can see this. So I'm going to right click on Happy Tree, select Methods, select Turn. This time I'm going to turn to the left and turn one quarter of a revolution and we can see the tree turn. Okay. And by the way, the objects turn about their center. So how exactly this turning takes place depends a little bit on where that center is. So sometimes it might not turn quite the way you expect it to. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try something else here a little bit. I'm going to try rolling the tree. Okay, so I'm going to undo, put the tree back. And I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to right click, methods. This time I'm going to pick roll. I'm going to roll the tree to the left a quarter of revolution. I want you to see what this happens. Ooh, the tree did that. It turned 90 degrees, but it didn't turn horizontally 90 degrees. It turned vertically 90 degrees. It actually turns over its front axis, which was that blue line I showed you on the frog. Okay. I could hit undo to stand this tree back up, but I'm going to do something a little bit different. Okay, Just again to show you what the things you can do. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to right click again on Happy Tree. I'm going to select Method. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here. And down here I see Happy Tree Stand Up. And what this will do is force the object to be perpendicular to the ground. Okay, and It's a nice way that if you've been playing around and you're not quite sure if you're quite perpendicular to the ground, that will make it perfectly perpendicular to the ground. Okay. And again, what I would like you to do is to play around with, you can play around with those others. There's lots of methods there. Feel free to play with them. Okay. I want to get this frog to come back to where he was, so I'm going to right click. I'm going to get the frog to uh, methods. I'm going to turn him to the left. If you recall, I turned him to the right before a quarter revolution, so he's marking it. And what I want to do is I want to get the t frog to stick out its tongue. And I know you can't see it, but there's actually a tongue down there in its head. And I'm not going to be able to just click on it by clicking on the frog with the mouse. And in fact, that's not going to accomplish what I want to do. So how am I going to get them out? Well, remember that everything is over here on the object tree. So I'm going to zoom over there. And I'm going to hit the plus button beside the frog. And I suspect the tongue is probably in the frog's head. So I'm going to click there. And oh, probably, there's even more subparts. I'm going to click jaw. And then under jaw there, I'm going to see the word tongue. And what I want to do is I want to move that tongue forward uh, 0 0.05 meters. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go right click on tongue, select methods. This time I'm going to select, and notice how it's telling you what you've got selected. It's, and it's in a sort of a subtree. It's frog, head, jaw, tongue, because the tongue was part of the jaw, which was part of the head, which was part of the frog. Okay. But what I want to do is I want to move, not move to, I want to just move. Make sure you select the right one. And move is up here at the top. And I want it to move in which direction? I want it to move forward. And I'm going to get it to move 0 0.05 meters. And the thing to notice is I don't have 0 0.05 meters as an option. But I do have this other option. So I'm going to click Other. And I get this little thing looks like a calculator. And what I want to do is type in 0 0.05. Okay. And hit OK. And I noticed that I haven't quite got the frog's tongue out there yet. So I'm going to try again. Tongue. I'm going to go methods. Okay. I want to see that tongue. So I'm going to go move. And I'm going to say forward again. And notice that I typed in 0 0.05 before. And now it's there again. So now I'm going to select it again. Oh, I'm starting to see its tongue. I'd like to see a little bit more tongue. So I'm going to try this one more time. I'm going to go right click again. Method, move, forward, 0 0.05. Ah, now I'm seeing a tongue that I like. Okay, I'm going to zoom out. So now I'm starting to see the frog's tongue. So it gives you some pretty uh, fine controls over what we're going to be doing. Here's something else we're going to do. I want to get the frog to look at the tree, to turn and face the tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click, this time on the whole frog. 
don't click on one of the subparts because if you click on one of the subparts, it's only going to turn that subpart. So I want to click on the whole frog. Maybe I'll close this so that I don't have to worry about all the subparts. And I'm going to go to methods. And what I'm looking for is one called turn to face. And you got different objects. You don't think about this, but there's actually a light. So there's a camera that you can have the frog turn to face the camera. There's a light source which you can't see, but it's there somewhere. There's the ground. And by the way, if you have the frog turn to face the ground, it'll turn to face where the center of the ground is, which is very hard for you to tell. So again, sometimes you might do something a little bit unpredictable. But what I want to do is get the frog to turn to face the happy tree. So I'm going to click happy tree, and the frog will turn to face the happy tree. All right. So what I'd like you to do is to go through that exercise yourself, see if you can get the same effect to get the frog looking at the happy tree with its tongue stuck out a little bit like that. Okay. Finally, the last thing, to really get a good look at the tongue, and I know it's kind of hard to see, I'm going to right-click on the frog, and in fact, instead of right-clicking on the object, I'm going to right-click on the frog itself, just to show you that it can go, what you get from the object tree here and what you get from actually clicking on the object is exactly the same. So I'm going to right-click on the frog, I'm going to go to Methods, and I'm going to zoom in here so we can see what I'm doing. And I want to get a good look at this frog. Oh, actually, I don't want to go to methods. I want to say camera, get a good look at this. I want to select that. And watch what happens. This is what I did before. And now I can see I got a really good look at that frog. I can see its tongue. That's just the way I want it. Okay. I don't want to keep it that way, so I'm going to undo. All right. And now I'm going to save this. So what I'd like you to do. Is do the exact same exercise. All I'm looking for is that you can get the frog with a tongue stuck out much the same way as I have, staring straight at the tree like that. All right. And use the methods that I show. Don't use these mouse controls here. Use the finer controls. All right. So I'm, uh, that's it.